My name is Alex, and uh, I'm going to tell a little bit about the containers and how you can make even greater experiences on uh, such platforms as uh, SharePoint, Viva, and uh, Teams, etc. Whatever uh, platform you are de delivering to using SPFX uh, framework. Uh, but let me get started with just a, a usual example, usual case. For example, I want to or oh, I'm asked to join uh, join in uh, some project and to fix uh, uh, some bug or improve some features. So what I usually do, I'm cloning a project like this. Uh, then I'm going inside and uh, look in the structure. I can see that it's just a normal fix structure. So node. Uh, modules are not installed, so I run npm install like this. Uh, but hey, I don't have any npm on this machine, uh, and I don't have uh, Node.js on my machine. And the reason why I don't have it, uh, it, there are a few reasons. First, I pursue consistency, so uh, whatever version we used for production, for building and shipping production. Uh, I want to have the very same version for every developer in a team. And uh, that means if I work for many different projects, I need to have a different uh, versions. Uh, I need to use different versions on my laptop. And uh, of course, you can solve it with uh, such uh, tool as NVM, but uh, I'm involved in many other projects, not just uh, Node.js and uh, SPFX. I, I work with Python and uh, Terraform and uh, uh, PNP PowerShell. So I don't want to just have a niche solution for this uh, consistency. I want to have a generic solution that I can use for any uh, technology that I work with. Uh, second part is clarity. It means uh, that I don't want to uh, always keep in mind what dependencies are uh, I already installed on this laptop and what dependencies are not installed. I have pretty few laptops, believe me, and I, uh, I work with pretty uh, few projects at the same time. So I don't want to always keep uh, this picture in mind. Uh, I, I want to focus on some uh, more exciting things. And uh, the last but not least is, an as uh, is a security aspect. It means that uh, when I run some co uh, run a code uh, from from a repository, I don't want to even spend time on considering whether it, whether this code is trusted, whether it is uh, mature and safe to run. Uh, I just want to run it uh, in kind of isolated way, so it cannot uh, affect my uh, my laptop and cannot affect uh, repositories, other repositories that I have on my laptop. And of course, I work for many different customers, and I don't want to expose the uh, expose uh, repositories uh, kind of uh, between each other. Uh, so to address that, if you put these demands into Extremum, you could use some virtualization. Of course, you can create a virtual environment, for example, a virtual machine for each project. Uh, every developer will have a dedicated virtual machine for every project. And for example, uh, those developers who work with the so-called IT assistant project, they will have this uh, virtual machine, or they will have uh, the, the very same virtual machines with the same software. We could uh, we could create a template of this virtual machine, right? We could verify this template. And then we could distribute this virtual machine across across all developers, and they will have a consistent, very consistent experience, uh, very same version of uh, Node.js and NPM, and whatever uh, whatever dependencies uh, are necessary for this particular project. And if we work with a few projects, then we could use a few uh, virtual machines. Um, that is totally viable. I lot of, I work a lot with uh, SharePoint uh, on premise, and I know that. Uh, uh, well, we deliver such projects for uh, SharePoint on premise where we uh, develop on uh, virtual machines and we automate preparing uh, images for virtual machines. We automate provisioning. So this is all automatable, uh, no worries. But still, uh, virtual machines are quite heavy. And even for uh, running SPFX, you will need some about 10 gigabytes of disk for this virtual machine. You will need uh, about 4 gigabytes of RAM, etc. 
and even if you automate everything completely, you will still uh, there will be still some uh, inconvenient situation for uh, developers when they when they want to expose the machine on, or refresh it or uh, even start and uh, shut down. So this is uh, not optimal, really. Uh, even if you invest in uh, development and uh, in in this environment, there will be still uh, some uh, not satisfaction from from uh, the developers. Uh, what we suggest instead is using uh, containers, which is another another way of virtualization. So it 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 has the same idea of virtualization as virtual machines, but it's just a bit different. Okay. Uh, so you still can create uh, so-called container images, and you can pre-install software there. For example, you can install, uh, you can use uh, Linux with a specific version, uh, Node.js and and npm, etc. And then from this image, you could create uh, containers. So these are also virtualized environments. Again, uh, they are similar to virtual machines, but a bit different. Uh, okay, maybe enough token. Let me show you how it works and you will see by yourself. Uh, so from here, from this folder, I'm opening the same uh, the same project in the GitHub, the same as we just cloned. And here is the guide. So I just need to run a few commands here first uh, to assign some permissions and I need to put my pseudo password here and the second line is actually uh, starting uh, docker uh, so for running this command i need to, uh, docker to be installed on my machine and the point is docker is the only what i need to have installed on my machine when i worked with uh, when i work with sharepoint when i work with uh, python when i work with uh, golang I don't install anything. I'll just use Docker, and that's the only thing I, I have. OK, so I run it. And boom, it's created already. So right now, uh, with just one line, I created a virtual environment on my machine, and it's up and running. I have NPM on this environment already. And if we look, for example, uh, what happens behind the scene, I run stats. And I see this container is just taking uh, about eight uh, megabytes of memory. What do you say about that? So this is a virtual environment, isolated with pre-installed software. In, it just requires uh, eight uh, megabytes for running it. Uh, all right. So let's go further, and I will go on, go on, and install uh, the modules. And uh, as it will be installing, uh, let me go back to slides and uh, uh, tell you a bit, a bit more about this command that we just run. Uh, so we told Docker to create this environment. We told it to uh, to map uh, the, my, my, my directory that I have locally on my laptop. We map it to a virtual directory that there is on a on a uh, virtual uh, disk space on on this container so the, uh, when i run a command in 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 this container it will work with the, with my files with my sharepoint framework files uh, just not even understanding that it it is really working remotely uh, so that's what we did here and then we say we need to expose two ports, which we need for uh, Chrome or a browser to work with. And uh, we need to create uh, this container from this image. I hope you can see it well. Uh, but the image is uh, a SPFX image that is uh, prom promoted or offered by uh, PNP community. So PNP community is maintaining this image uh, of uh, the Docker and we use it all right uh, let's get back here so it installed modules it created uh, ssl certificate 
now I need to run uh, Gulp Serve. Uh, the only thing remaining is that the certificate was created inside this uh, virtual environment. But since I will be using a, a browser on my real laptop, I will uh, run this snippet and install uh, the certificate on my laptop. Here you go. So now everything is up and running and I can just uh, go ahead, open Workbench and add that part and start contributing. So you see, I didn't have to install any additional software. I came to the project just using, just uh, having Docker on board and I started contributing already. I can uh, go and uh, fix uh, debug. Uh, okay, what do I do here? I go. Uh, hmm. Let me open the uh, this project in Visual Studio. Oh, like this. And for example, I want to. Uh, change some parameter here. Like I want this password that is generated by this uh, web part. I want it twice longer. That's what I was told by my uh, project manager. Leave update is working. And or maybe not working. Ah. Let's refresh it. Yeah, now we have it twice longer. Uh, so that is it. Uh, that was easy, but uh, you may uh, you may think, uh, well, yeah, I'm a SharePoint developer. I'm already demanded. Why should I spend time on learning this uh, Docker uh, fancy things? Uh, and maybe you're right. Uh, maybe you don't have to. Uh, if someone prepares the project for running, for example, in code space, which is a fancy technology, a f f fancy feature of uh, GitHub. Here, this is another example. Uh, you can just use, uh, the, you can run this container somewhere in the cloud. Before we do that, let me close this container that I run. So I just type exit, and now we don't have any uh, containers running at all. You see, it was easy, created like this, and then when you exit, it just removed. It's disposable and very lightweight. You don't need to wait until it starts and shut down. Uh, all right, so this project is prepared for code spaces, and I go like this. I start the code space. This is a container that will be running uh, in a Git, uh, GitHub. Uh, data center. So from this, I want to connect to Visual Studio. Open Visual Studio code. Great. From here, I just want to run, uh, create a new certificate. And I have uh, modules uh, installed before because I used this uh, workplace or code space yesterday. So it's still holding my files here. I don't need to install again. All right. And now I run gulp serve no browser. And let's check that we don't we don't have any containers running on my laptop, so I don't have to install any Docker or anything on my laptop to be able to de develop in this solution. So I just uh, go with Visual Studio and say, OK, uh, GitHub, run this container for me. And then, and then it's just running. Uh, now it's running, and I need to run the same snippet for uh, handling certificates on my uh, browser and we are we should be good to go let's try it out 
Here you go. You see, uh, that's the future. So um, I don't have anything more to present right now. Um, and I will I will appreciate all the questions if you put them in the chat. Uh, I will be glad to, to answer them. Uh, back to you, Patrick. Great work. Great Thank work. you, Alex, Thank you, for that. Uh, uh, really uh, exciting to see uh, more and more uh, use of Docker in these containers across uh, the different PMP solutions and across the different uh, methods of doing development. Really uh, cool, cool stuff. Uh, I need something that I could personally learn a lot more about. So it's exciting to see these demos coming and really motivates me to learn more. Mm -hmm.